Good morning students. We are learning water resource engineering and hydrology. We are discussing on runoff and hydrographic analysis. Well, in this lecture we will discuss about synthetic unit hydrograph. If the rainfall data is available for the basin, the unit hydrograph can be derived by using the method that described earlier in previous lectures. Yes. Now, however, if there are many basins especially uh, in developing countries uh, some catchment basins are not gauged but for which the unit hydrograph is required so at such cases at such basins how we can plot the hydrograph even they do not have the gauges so from what we can get the runoff or rainfall data so for such catchments, unit hydrographs are derived by relating the selected basin characteristics and for which the unit hydrograph can be known with the unit hydrograph characteristics. So uh, you have to recall the graph of unit hydrograph and the component of that hydrograph that would be its characteristics. Well, uh, the established correlation is used to determine the characteristics of the unit hydrograph for the particular known basin characteristics. So, to determine the unit hydrograph of the unknown or ungauged catchment is known as the synthetic unit hydrograph. Well, several techniques are adopted for establishing uh, the relation between the basin characteristics and to its uh, uh, unit hydrograph characteristics okay but the most commonly used method that is the snyder's method so let's discuss something about snyder's method so the snyder uh, studied a large number of catchment basins in the appalachian highlands of the eastern united states and he has developed a set of empirical equations that connecting the basin characteristics with the unit hydrograph characteristics well so for that first of all let's see what are the characteristics of the unit hydrograph that he has studied on so the first characteristics was the basin lake the unit duration the peak discharge then the correction to the basin lake for the non-standard unit duration. The fifth and the last characteristics on which he had made this analysis that is the time base. Okay, so we have to look for this unit hydrograph characteristics and from which we can get the hydrograph of such ungauged catchment area. Or so let's see. A unit hydrograph with the same characteristics well here time base is TB the peak discharge that is QP the unit duration is T the basin lake that is the TP value okay and the corrections to the basin lake for the non-standard unit duration that is capital TP so these all the characteristics are shown in this figure Okay, now let's discuss in detail how we can find these characteristics. So, for that, we have some formulas. Let's look into that formula. The first one that is basin lake. Okay, so to find out basin lake, we have the formula that is CT into L into LC raised to 0.3. Well, the L is the length of the mainstream in the catchment. And the LC, that is the distance along the main stream from the gauging site to the point on the stream, which is nearest to the centroid of the basin. Now, uh, what is basin lake? It is the time interval from the midpoint of the unit rainfall access to the peak of the unit hydrograph. So, as here, uh, shown in this figure this is the peak value okay so that time and the time interval for the 
rainfall access unit rainfall access so that is here mentioned in the box and the middle value of that box from that point to the peak value of the discharge that will be the basin lake the next that is the unit duration well unit duration value that t is tp upon 5.5 so that is a t value now the next is peak discharge well peak discharge that is the qp this one so the formula for qp 2.78 cp into a upon tp well the qp is the peak discharge that would be in meter cube per second a is the catchment area tp as we have seen it is it is basin lake the cp is again a constant value a constant of what a dimensional is regional constant that is representing the retention and the storage capacity of the basin well generally uh, the value of this constant is been found in between 0.56 to 0.69 the next that is the corrections to the basin lake for non standard unit duration that would be the tp and the formula for tp that is 0.9545 that is small tp plus capital t by 4 well capital t is the non standard unit duration now uh, talk, talking about the last one that is the time base well for the time base formula is tb is equals to 72 plus 3 tp okay and this will you will be in hours well with this data we can able to find out some points but to form a particular unit hydrograph we also need the width of intermediate points and for that we have the two different formula at discharge at 50% discharge at 75% well so the formula for the width of hydrograph at this discharge stage that is at w50 the this width would be 5.87 upon qp raised to 1.0 at so at this stage the the width of the graph would be this one and the width at 75% discharge the formula is width at 50% discharge upon 1.75 well here we have the capital qp the peak discharge so to find out small qp we have to divide the peak discharge by the area so with this width we have one more graph that here you can see this is the discharge at 75% and discharge at 50% so the width is divided as one third of the width and two third of the width so the left portion is one third of the width and the right portion that is the two third of the width so this is how Snyder had made its method to find out or to prepare the synthetic unit hydrograph okay now the next concept that is for the hydrographic analysis that is flow duration curve well uh, to study the flow duration curve we all know that the stream flow of any catchment or any a stream it varies over a water year okay now one of the popular method of studying this stream flow analysis or the stream flow variability is through this flow duration curve okay well a flow duration curve of a particular stream is nothing but a plot of discharge against the percentage of time and the flow the flow that is equal or the exceeding and this curve is also known as the discharge frequency curve well how it can be plotted the stream flow data is arranged in descending order of discharge by using the class intervals now if the number of individual value 
is very large or is a uh, much variable then the data that is used can be on daily basis can be weekly and 10 daily or the monthly value now if n number of data are used in uh, listing the positions of any discharge q then the percentage probability of the flow magnitude that is m upon n plus 1 well n we know the number of data points that are used for plotting the curve and m is the order number or we can say the class values that we are classifying the data okay so m is the data or the order number of the discharge so at what what interval we have started discharging the water now if we uh, see the flow duration curve okay here the plot of the discharge q and there is a p value that is the percentage probability and both the things are shown in this graph well the flow duration curve represent the distribution of cumulative frequency and can be considered to represent the stream flow variation of an average year well the ordinate of qp at any percentage probability represent the flow magnitude in an average year that can be expected to be equal or it can be expected to be exceeded okay so the percentage of time that is termed in pp percent okay that completely dependable on the flow so as the flow increases that percent may be increases and if the flow will be decrease the percentage may decrease now if we discuss the important characteristics of the flow duration curve the first is the slope of a flow duration curve that depends upon the interval of the data that is selected for an example a daily stream flow data gives a steeper curve then a curve that is based on the monthly data for the same stream so this is just due to the smoothening of small peaks in the monthly data while the second characteristics that is the presence of a reservoir in a stream considerably modifies the virgin flow duration curve and that is depending on the nature of flow regulation so you may uh, you may observe the variation in the curve in this graph that the natural flow was that but if we see the flow with the regulation so that curve sometimes varies okay and that is completely depending on the nature of the flow regulation well the third that is the virgin flow duration curve when plotted on a particular uh, log probability paper a plot is drawn as a straight line that should be at least over the central region so uh, from this property various coefficient that is expressing the variability of the flow in a stream can be developed for the description and the comparison of different streams well the chronological sequence of the occurrence of flow is marked in the flow duration curve the flow duration curve plotted on a log paper is useful in comprising the flow characteristics of different different stream while a steep slope of a curve that indicates a stream with a highly variable discharge on the other hand if the slope is flat that will indicate that a slope response of the catchment to the rainfall and it also indicates there is a very small variability in that particular stream okay so these are the characteristics of flow duration curve while talking about the uses of flow duration curve well the curve uh, is used in evaluating 
various dependable flows in the planning of water resource engineering projects well it is also used to evaluating the characteristics of the hydropower potential of a particular river or a stream also it helps in designing of a drainage system as well as in flood control studies well also in the computing the sedimentation load and dissolved solid load this flow duration curve may be used also comparing the adjacent catchments with a view to extend the stream flow data this flow duration curve can be used so these are the uses of flow duration curve so i hope students you understand this topics thoroughly thank you so much for your kind attention i will see you in the next lecture